let's do some work examples on the uh, case of physical pendulum so this is our problem a 1.80 kilogram rod from a car engine is pivoted about a horizontal knife edge as shown in the figure below so this is a figure that illustrates the problem the center of gravity of the rod was located by balancing and it is 0.200 meters from the pivot so from this point here so 200 meters the CG is located 0.200 meters from the pivot so when the rod is set into small amplitude oscillation so this is very important it's emphasized that it, it's a small amplitude oscillation therefore we can approximate this as a simple harmonic motion so when that is considered it makes 100 complete swings meaning complete cycles in 120 seconds now you are asked to calculate for the moment of inertia of the rod about the rotation axis through the pivot so what you're going to do is first you need to make sense of what are the things that are mentioned in the problem so the, the problem mentioned put it here that you completed 100 um, complete swings or that is complete cycles 100 complete cycles in uh, 120 seconds okay so you might be asking what quantity is this referring to so you have cycles per second so that is referring to the frequency of the oscillation meaning um, the frequency of this oscillating uh, physical pendulum so when you do that uh, you're gonna get F is equal to 100 100 divided by 120 so this numerator and denominator are divisible by 100 so that will reduce to 10 over a six, uh, 120 12 and then these two again are divisible by 5 so you have a 5 over 6 so 5 over 6 and the unit would be since this is frequency the rightful unit is second inverse since you have s here or that is just 5 over 6 hertz so that is the frequency of the oscillation now then uh, another thing is you we go back to the problem and the, pro the problem says here that you need to calculate the moment of inertia about the rotation axis through the pivot so meaning you are asked to find for i now maybe some of you will say that this is an easy problem because we know that we actually have an equation for the moment of inertia of a rod which is one third ml squared right you just plug in the value of mass so when you refer to the problem the mass is even and l also in this case is even right and so if you do it like this one you will get a different result because i will just iterate what is what you have learned in the previous uh, semester this equation of the moment of inertia for a rod is under the assumption that it is uniform meaning the mass is uniformly distributed throughout the rod which is not the case for the simple pendulum okay so that's why you cannot simply use this one okay so we will instead uh, use what we have learned in our discussion on uh, the simple pendulum and, uh, and uh, approximating its motion as a simple harmonic motion so what happens then is um, let me just go back through some equations para mas ma-exercise ninyo inyong pag, pag, may, pag manipulate sa equation ba di ba we know that the torque given by uh, this situation here is mg so this is the force the d sine theta in this case is the lever arm L so this is L the lever arm and this is the force the force is due to the weight so what happens then is that under small angle the sine of theta is simply equal to theta okay so since this is a small amplitude oscillation so this is true this holds true so you'll have then that the torque tau is equal to mg d sine of uh, no, theta only mg d theta so from that one also you remember uh, the relationship I mean the analog of the second law of motion okay I'm just uh, repeating what I thought I thought in the class that is the torque I mean the force is now represented in torque meaning the from second law of motion in in 
uh, rotation or involving um, rotation now this will become the moment that the mass will be represented by the moment of inertia i the acceleration is now the angular acceleration alpha so what what happens then is we're going to use this um, expression for torque here and so we have the torque which is equal to i alpha that is just equal to mgd theta okay so um, express that as this one alpha is equal to mg d theta all over the moment of inertia okay and take note that the moment of inertia here this portion is what is asked in the problem so um, from this expression also you need to recall something from the very basic uh, first equations that we know uh, we have actually this equation that the alpha is equal to negative omega squared x, right? But this was for the case of, of uh, spring mass system. Now, um, since you also have ha alpha here, so you can actually write that one, that alpha is equal to, okay, by the way, naan is negative the class, understandably, naan is negative because if you're in displacement towards the right, the action of the restoring force will always be opposite to that direction. Okay, so if you have an alpha here, so you will get a negative and then you find out that um, this term, mgd all over i, and then when you square that, then you have theta. So you see here that um, when you square this one, it will return to this expression above it. But the thing while, while that I showed to you here, I explicitly showed to you that it's for you to make sense of what happens to the omega now in um, physical pendulum. So the x now is represented by or replaced by the angular displacement since this is also displacement. x is displacement and theta is displacement for the simple pendulum. So what, what that tells you is that um, omega is equal to uh, the square root of mgd all over i. Okay, so you now have that expression for omega. Let me highlight this one. Now since the problem asks us to find, as I've said earlier, for the moment of inertia i, what we are going to do is we need to find an equation that we can manipulate. So uh, I think I'll, I'll do it here. So solution, although those were part of the solution. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> let's just say solution. So we'll work with this. Uh, since we know frequency, the easiest equation we could think of, well, you can do it the other way or another way of solving this one. If you could find one is to do this one. You know that omega is just equal to the 2 pi multiplied by the frequency. You know frequency. And omega, you know, an expression for omega which contains i, and that is significant because i is what you are looking for. Okay, so from this expression, you then you'll have uh, omega, you replace omega with the square root of mgd all over i, and then you have here 2 pi. The frequency is given by okay, let's just put f here, I'll manipulate it later. Okay, so after that one. We need to again. Our goal is i, so that uh, for for us to isolate i, we need to square both sides. Okay, whatever as I've said in the class, whatever you do on the right right hand side, you need to do it also on the left hand side, and so you are left with mgd. So the the radical sign would cancel out by right, over i, and then what happens here? Well, you have four pi squared, and then f squared. Okay, so. After that one, so what, what you are going to do in this case since the i is in the denominator is you need to multiply both sides by i. So when I do that on the left hand side, the i will cancel out and so I am left with the expression mgd. Okay, is equal to and then when I multiply i, both at uh, the other side of the equation, I'll have 4 pi squared frequency squared multiplied by i. So this is looking good since the i is already on the numerator, but I wanted to isolate i further such that naginusara siya sa either sides of the equation. So what I'm going to do is to divide both sides by, I mean multiply both sides by 1 over 4 pi squared f squared. So when I do that, 
um, this term here uh, like the coefficient or like this coefficient of i in this case will cancel out on the right hand side so the right hand side of the equation will give me i and then on the left hand side I am left with mgd all over 4 pi squared frequency squared okay so let's try to substitute or plug in the values so I'll put it in a different color here so I have i is equal to mgd all over 4 pi squared frequency squared so the m stands for the mass which is given to be 1.80 kilograms okay the what happens to the g since we are on earth that is the acceleration due to gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared and for the d is actually the distance from the pivot point to the center of gravity so that's what you need to remember about the, the, the d so it's basically a distance from the pivot up until the center of gravity and that is also given to be 0 0.200 meters okay so you divide everything by 4 pi squared and then the frequency is also uh, you have solved that earlier that is 5 over 6 second squared so take note the second is in the denominator in this case so you'll have then an i okay let's try to check whether our um, units will will make sense so since s is in the denominator in this case and you square that you have s squared so that will cancel out with this term here so you'll have kilogram meter squared which is what you expect for i so this that's that's looking good so when you plug it plug the values on your calculator let me just work on it 1.80 so you would have 1.80 multiply that by 9.8 and then you have 0 0.200 meters so you'll have 4 pi squared and then uh, you you have 5 over 6 squared so um, the calculator will give you this value uh, since this is less than 1 for the convention we have set on the class we need to express it into 4 decimal places and so you have 0 0.128 seven uh, yeah it eight seven because uh, what is written in the calculator is zero point one two eight six eight six zero zero eight nine so when you round it off to four decimal places so you get zero point twelve eighty seven now the units do not forget the units so that is kilogram multiplied by meter squared which is the expected unit or the correct unit for quantity such as the moment of inertia so you get that one you you get this solution to the problem take note um, do not be deceived by using this simplistic formula for the moment of inertia because again this is under the assumption that the mass is uniform I mean the uniform on distribution among mass which is not the case for simple pendulum for in general so I'm hoping this was helpful so if you have any questions, you can drop your comments below or send me an email.